Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Diaclone Gridman Universe 01 Battles Gridman. So this is a crossover that Diaclone is doing with Gridman. Really came out of left field. I was not expecting this, but it looks really, really cool. Now you can see this form here is made to resemble Thunder Gridman, which is when Gridman combines with God Zenon. As far as I can tell, this does not have a God Zenon form. I think it's just the combination. But you get some really cool artwork here on the front. On the top, not really too much going on. The bottom's just a bunch of warnings and whatnot. Over here on the side, it shows Gridman kind of riding it in the jet mode. And this uh, has the full combination here on this side. So if we take a look at the back. It does have a few different combinations. You have Gridman, you have what they call the Battle Hanger, which is the jet mode. And then when they combine together, you get Battles Gridman A mode, which again is made to resemble Thunder Gridman. And it kind of shows you how you kind of open it up and pop him inside and then everything closes up over top of him. It looks like there are a couple other configurations if we look at the back of the box here. So this says Full Attack Mode, which looks like you just kind of pop the wings up. Maybe you have the cannons uh, drop down. He's got the power vice, which is just kind of like a large claw. And then it does have the sword and shield combination that you can combine together, just like Gridman did on the show. And then it also has a B mode, which looks like you just kind of take the backpack off. And that may be a little bit more poseable or something. I'm not 100% sure. We'll, we'll check that out. And then it's just him riding the battle hanger. And then, of course, you have combat support aircraft which looks like a smaller subset of the Battle Hanger, maybe a couple less pieces put together. And then you have the Bullet Fighter like all Diaclone figures have. So this looks really neat. Like I said, I was not expecting this to ever be a thing that existed, but it's really, really cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, get everything out of the box, and we'll take a closer look. So real quick, before we jump into the toy itself, I kind of wanted to show these two little booklets off. And normally I don't bother with Diaclone instructions. And this one is just instructions. It just shows you all the pieces that it comes with. Gives you all the instructions for putting everything together, which is very, very helpful. But the second book is actually kind of cool. It's kind of a storyline. Now, unfortunately, I can't really read it all, but that's a really cool picture right there. And then uh, it just, again, kind of shows you basically what's on the back of the box. The combined modes, the features, and things like that. But then it also goes into like the story that I guess they've created for this crossover. Let me shift this up a little bit. And it has a couple of cool pictures. Again, I can't read this, unfortunately, but if I wonder if someone's translated this uh, somewhere online. That's one of the future releases. So I just think that's neat. They actually took the time to craft this story for this crossover. And uh, it's all in this book, so they kind of give you this second book that has all this storyline that they created, which that's really neat. It's a lot of extra effort they didn't have to go to. So I just thought it was really cool and I wanted to show it off real quick. But yeah, you get both of these books in the box and they're just, they're really nice quality. They should hold up over time. Uh, a lot of nice pictures and everything. So very, very cool. So here's everything you get in the box. Obviously you have all the pieces for the fighter and the combination. And of course they're all meant to come apart because he needs to have articulation when everything's fully combined. First off though, I want to start with the Gridman figure. He really looks great. They did a really nice job. You can see he's got some light piping there in the eyes. Really very cool. And just all in all, really nice detail. And he's got good articulation and paint applications as well. So the head's on a ball joint. You can move it up and down, side to side. You get a little bit of tilt side to side, but not a ton. He does have a rotation here in the shoulder. And then he's got kind of a hinge in the lower part of his shoulder down here. So the shoulder pads themselves don't rotate up and down. He's got a 90 degree bend and a rotation in the elbow. And then he's got a swivel in the wrist. And then he's got opening hands. It's just one solid set of fingers, but the hands do open. He's got a ball joint here in the torso. He can kick pretty far forward, uh, kick pretty decently back. He can't really kick that far out to the side because of the kind of thigh armor here. Now there is a thigh swivel here, so if you really needed to do some outside kicks or something, you could kind of rotate it a little bit to the back, but not a lot. Uh, you do have a little bit more than 90 degrees in the knee, and then you have a hinge here in the ankle. It looks like there's a little bit of tilt side to side, but I honestly can't tell if that's intentional. I think it is, uh, but it's not a ton, so I think it's just, you know, just the tiniest little bit of ankle tilt. But it's a really cool figure. I think he looks really good. Like I said, really nice articulation, really great paint applications. He's even got the engine device here on his wrist. 
and he's fully painted everywhere. The back is just as painted as the front, so it's a really great little figure. I would say this on its own is probably five and a half to six inches tall, if I had to guess. I don't really have anything super comparable. I can throw up a, uh, this is a Deluxe Clash Transformer, so you can see it's a little taller as I knock him into everything, of course, perfect. But yeah, I would say probably five and a half inches tall by itself, if I had to guess. But uh, he does have his sword and shield. The sword looks fantastic. Really nice and long. Looks great. I don't know if this is painted or not. I, th I think the blades are painted. If I had to guess, you can see they're kind of a sparklier, shinier metallic than the rest of the sword. But I can't tell if it's two different pieces of plastic. It might just be this part is inlaid and this is a different uh, piece of plastic or it could be painted. I honestly can't tell. But this just kind of slides in to his hands. And honestly, the way it's meant to work, you don't even really need the fingers. The fingers aren't really grasping it. It's kind of sliding into like a, you know, horseshoe shape that is the inside of the hand. So he's got a pretty good grasp on it. And then he's also got this piece over here that you can see uh, will become the shield. You just have to unpeg this. So these two halves are kind of pegged together. So it helps to have a little bit of fingernail when you're playing with these just to kind of get into a few places. But we can go ahead and pop that open. You can see it's a very stylized version of the shield. Obviously it's much longer than the original in uh, Gridman. But I like it. I think it looks pretty good. And then this works much the same way with this piece here that just kind of slides in to this fist. And so there you go. You have the sword and the shield. And he looks great. Really, really fantastic. That sword is just amazing looking. I love how long they made, they made it. Because it is also functional with the combined robot mode, so it has to be a little bit bigger. But of course, you can take this out of his hand, close this back up, peg that all together, and then this will slide over top of the blade all the way down and then you can have the combined sword mode just like you did on the show so that's really cool and it's such a simple way to transform it back and forth it looks great they nailed it i mean again the paint applications the blue and the gold here really really sharp so i absolutely love that it's just a massive blade very 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 cool so let me see if I can actually deploy this tiniest little bit of ankle tilt to get him to stand. He doesn't have too much trouble standing, but the sword is fairly heavy, so it makes him a little front heavy, so you kind of have to worry about that. Uh, here is the little Diaclone fighter. He is super tiny. He is translucent uh, plastic, as you can see. The gray and the red are all translucent. You have two little paint applications for the visor and then the little emblem on his chest. Now these have standard articulation for Diaclone, so it's a very limited ball joint at the shoulder. You have a 90 degree bend there at the elbow. You do have an ab crunch. You have a very limited ball joint in the waist. And then you have a 90 degree bend at the knee. And he does have the little magnets in his feet, so you can stick them to metal. So just for fun, here is my knife. And he does stick. So he has the little magnets in the feet, which I think is really cool. And he can, of course, fit in the Bullet Fighter, which I really love the look of this. I think they did a great job with this. Again, beautiful paint applications. That's one thing about Diaclone. There are no stickers. You don't have to worry about stickers. Now, if you want to get this into the uh, Bullet Fighter mode, you actually just push this all together. And then it's a little bit more compact. I think it looks even better. You can flip up the landing gear. You have this piece here which I really don't know what this is for. I tried to look in the directions and I didn't really see anything. I'm probably just missing it, but I don't know what that piece is for. Now this back landing gear, these two pieces here are molded in so you can't do anything with that, but you can retract this piece here in the front. And then of course we can open up the canopy here and then take our tiny little figure and bend him at the waist. And then he fits right inside. 
and then close that up. And he looks great piloting that. Really very cool. I just think this little fighter is really, really neat. I really like the look of this a lot. I think it looks really sharp. Great color combination. Love the canopy. Just overall really like the design of this. So earlier when I was showing off everything that comes in the box, I forgot a very important piece. Uh, I had this off to the side. I forgot to include it in the shot. This is a very, very important part of the set. This is going to kind of form the backpack in the robot mode. And also everything uh, gets attached to this for the battle hanger, which is the large fully assembled aircraft piece. So we're going to start by flipping these down. And then we're going to flip these wings up 90 degrees. And you can hear those really nice ratchets. Very, very cool. So you have these long, crazy cannons in the front. You have these little side cannons that have the barrels that go up and down, which is pretty cool. And you can actually take this and attach it to the bullet fighter. You can see two pegs right here. And that is going to attach to these little spots right here. And we will go ahead and pop this on. There we go. So this is called the Combat Support Aircraft. It's basically just a little bit of extra uh, thruster power and firepower for the bullet fighter. But very, very cool. I like the look of this quite a bit. So we will go ahead and we will unpeg this. And then I'm going to put the bullet fighter off to the side for a moment. And we will start going ahead and building the battle hangar, which is the large uh, everything combined aircraft. So this section actually slides all the way out here. It has a, a logical stopping point right there and there. So we're going to take this, we're going to start taking all of these little pieces here. We're going to take what will become the larger forearms and hands in the robot mode. And we're going to peg this in here and then slide this all the way forward like so. We're going to take this piece and you can see how it has kind of the square and there's a little spot right here. It just pops right in and then slides all the way forward. Now hopefully I put the right hands on the right side because it's kind of impossible to tell. But I'm assuming there's only one way you can put them on. So we'll see. Uh, <laughs> then we're going to take these pieces. You want to make sure that the drill bit pieces are facing completely forward. And then you can see uh, this piece right here is going to peg in and then kind of pop off to the side. You can see that there's just a tiny little bit of space right there. So we're going to push this forward and you can see it's all a matter of shapes like that lines up with this right here. And so that pops in here and then comes off to the side. Sometimes they don't stay. These don't stay as well as the other ones do. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't always like to stay in place. Uh, next, we're going to take this section here, which will become the waist. You're going to fold these pieces in like so. And then you can see how there's kind of a little channel right there. That is going to feed onto this. So this will feed through there and then just kind of hang out. This one is really giving me difficulty. I didn't have this much trouble with it earlier. I'm not really sure why it won't stay over there. But what I might just do is if I slide it up, because there's a channel to go up as well, so pop this in and then we'll just we'll slide it up just so it stops moving around. There we go. I had it on there earlier and it really wasn't a problem. I'm not really sure why it's giving me so much difficulty now, but whatever. We'll just leave it on like that for now. All right, next up, we're going to take this section, which is going to become like a set. This is kind of the base backpack and then the other backpack uh, plugs into this the head and the chest plate. So you can see those same two pegs we used earlier to combine to the bullet fighter are now going to peg in right here and here. So this is going to peg in. And you might want to be a little careful how, like this can really peg in tight, but if you peg it in really tight, it's almost impossible to take off. It's really a pain to get that to unpeg later on. Uh, so we're just going to kind of loosely peg that in for right now. Then the two feet pieces you're going to peg together like so, and they will peg into each other pretty easily. And then you can see these four pegs right here are going to peg in, oops, as I knock over Gridman, they're going to peg in right here and here. So we just go ahead and pop that on like so. And then you can go ahead and very slowly drop this back down like so. Just make sure you don't break anything, make sure it all uh, works out. So you have the bulk of the core hanger here 
and then I'm going to put that right there and stand Gridman back up. And then we're going to bring in the bullet fighter, pull these sections out, and then this, you can see that there's the tiniest little track right here and right there. And that is going to feed on to this right here and here. So it's very minimal. You could just get it on there. And then that slides on like so. And then you can just kind of bring this down a little bit. And then there we go. We have the Battle Hanger, which is the fully combined jet mode of all the pieces. It looks cool. I like it a lot. I really do. Um, I wish these pieces didn't flop around so much. I don't know why they're giving me such issues, but they are what they are. Now, a couple cool things you can do with this. Uh, you can actually take the sword from Gridman and you can peg it on. You have these two little clips right here and here. So let me zoom in on this. Whoop. So right here and right here. And you can kind of feed this through and that will kind of store in place right there. Or if you want, you can uh, do it this way. If you want the blade to face forward, you could do something like that. It doesn't stay as well. I mean, I guess if you, as long as you feed it all the way through, it should. It should stay pretty good. And then it comes out to about as long as the two blasters. So you have a couple of options there, which I think is pretty cool. Also, you have these two large pegs right here. And you have two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. So you can, if I can, it's really difficult to get this to line up. Um, so I'll just kind of do it tentatively, but where is the other, there we go. And you can peg him onto the top so that he can go ahead and ride it into battle. So we'll go ahead, we'll give him the sword back. So that's pretty cool. I really like the look of that. He can ride it and you know, he's pegged on, so he's not going anywhere. So that's pretty cool. But let's be honest, you came here for the combination, so let's do it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just take the sword out of Gridman's hand, and then I'm going to kind of just get him ready. You kind of want to just put the arms straight out to the side and then rotate the fists so that the palms are facing inward. And then you can kind of put him off to the side because we have some setup work to do over here. I am going to remove the bullet fighter as he is not part of the combination. So we want to slide him off the track. There we go. We can kind of push this back together and then we'll just sit him off to the side. Now, if you want the directions do show, you could completely take this all apart and just combine him as individual pieces. That's perfectly uh, acceptable option. But they do show you how you can kind of open this up so that he kind of fits inside here. And that's the one I want to show just because I think it's a little bit neater. Although I will say these are just coming off because these things are a bit of a pain. I, I, I did this earlier when I was kind of working through it the first time to figure out how everything works. And I did not have as much trouble with these. But they are really not cooperating right now. So they're just going to sit off to the side. So we'll, we'll deal with those a little bit later. But basically what you want to do... You want to uh, kind of bring this down just a bit so you can kind of slide this all the way out again so we can get this ready. And you can kind of see how this is going to work. So we're going to pop these sections down so we can get the feet in there. And then we're going to open up this so we have plenty of room for that. You can see right here that there is a peg. And we're going to take Gridman and peg it into this large peg spot here on his back. So he's going to fit in through here. And I'll probably want to put the legs together a little bit. Uh, and one thing quick to note, there is a tiny little uh, screw hole on his butt. It's almost impossible to see. It's right there. And there's also these pegs on the back of his legs. They're also going to be used to peg in a little bit later on. But for now, we want to just go ahead... And apparently this isn't open enough. There we go. So peg this onto his back. There we go. So he is pegged in. We're going to come down here. There are tiny pegs on the inside. It's probably difficult to see because it's all black. But right there and right there, 
those are going to peg into the back of his calf muscles. So I have to make sure I have this lined up so that pegs in. And this should peg in as well. Sometimes lining everything up is a little difficult. There we go. So those are all pegged in. Then you're going to just tilt his feet down. And then this is going to close up like so. These pieces on the side are going to flip up. Actually, you know what? I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's do this uh, waist section first. So the waist section, remember that tiny little screw hole, uh, peg hole I showed on his butt? There is a little peg right there. This thing is going to slide forward and kind of try to peg into his butt. And it's a little difficult to do because you have to line everything up. But there you go. That pegs in. And then these will come forward and close up and connect into each other like that. Now it's only held on by that one peg. So it does kind of rock a little bit side to side. But it should hold perfectly good. So we are going to uh, move the arms up a little bit. Now I will show off these pieces. You can see there's a little tab right here. And there's a little tab slot right there on the side of his oh no i'm sorry it's up here where are you it's kind of hard to see in the light there you go right there so this is going to come up and this is going to tab into that piece of his kind of like hip shin hip guard there that was hindering the articulation earlier but now you see how important it is so those come up and those peg into there you're going to take the wings and put them down at a 45 degree angle now if you had these pieces still connected you would have slid them all the way up and then you would slide them back down to peg onto the shoulders but we'll do that in a little bit uh, what you can do is start to slide the hand pieces in and then they will go onto his hands and honestly it might be easier just to take these off oh you know why because i have it on backwards that's why it's not going to work <laughs> So, yes, this one is not backwards. No, they're both on backwards. So that is why it didn't work. So you have to put these on. Yeah, I had them on backwards. They would go here and then slide down. I was wondering why it was a little, a little awkward. This should be this one. So basically, let's get this to actually work now that I have them lined up correctly. So this would be slid on here. You'd have this lined up. This would pop up and it would start to go over his hand. As it would slide up, it will push the robot fist out, and then you can kind of take the wing back, and now he has his new hands like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this one on. So this will slide up. Do I have this? I think I have this right. No, like this. That's why it's not working. This goes in here. Actually, no, this should be like this. There we go. This slides up. That clips in there. And there you go. Now you have the robot hands added on there. And you can kind of put these off to the side. It's just a little easier to have these go back. You're going to use these little gray pieces here. If you push these in, they will kind of kick the feet away. I mean, you don't have to use them, but it is, it's just basically this little gray piece here that goes down to kind of push them away from the feet. And at this point, you can slide this all the way back up. And now you have those guns. You can split the feet apart like so, and they do have some ankle tilt. So you have that. This is probably a good time to mention that I did forget a small step. When he's in the fighter mode, you can tuck these back a little bit just to give it the illusion of boosters. So when if you've done that in robot mode, you want to push this back up and then just kind of balance with the heels. He's got pretty nice heels. You just have to make sure. And you do have a little bit of ankle tilt there so I can kind of put that off to the side and then make sure the heels in the back so everything's standing up. So at this point, we want to take care of these shoulder pieces. This can kind of go at a 45 degree angle. There is a super tiny little peg right there. And that is going to peg in right 
there on the shoulders. And I think this is why the shoulder pads don't move because it would be really impossible to get this to actually peg in if they did because then everything would be moving around in there. But as it stands, they actually peg on pretty nicely. And then you just want to put the drills at like a 45 degree angle. So as you can see, we're, we're getting there. We're pretty much done. At this point, we're going to bring the head down. This part of the helmet will stay open so that we can clear this. This is going to come down. There are two pegs right here and here that this chest plate is going to come down and peg onto like so. And then we can put the head down to finish that off. And then we're pretty much done. That is pretty much it. And I will give him the sword. And then really it's up to you what you want to do with the back wings. Do these... See, this is hitting the back here. I guess I'll have to move this around a little bit so that he can actually hold this. There we go. But there you go. Now this guy is officially called Battles Gridman. But really, it's made to look like Thunder Gridman. And like I said, if you want to bring the wings back out, you certainly can if you like that look. If you want to kind of put these at like a little bit of a 45 degree angle, you can do that too. Whatever look you prefer. You can completely uh, pop these up. I think you're supposed to go like this. And then bring the cannons up like so. Will this come up anymore? There you go. So there you go. That has the cannons fully deployed. And I think this mode is called Battles Gridman Full Attack Mode. So there you go. <laughs> but yeah, he looks pretty cool. He's also got these grabber claws on the back of his hand. So you can pop these out if you would like to use those as a weapon. Uh, they also show off B mode, which is basically just taking this backpack off. And this is why I didn't peg this in super tight earlier, because it's a little difficult to unpeg this. There we go. Okay, <laughs> we dropped the sword, but we got the backpack off. So that works. So this is mode B, which is basically just him without the backpack. I don't know why they, uh, they're very in intent on telling me about this, but you can attach other backpacks. So if you have other wings or other backpack components from other Diaclone figures, you can go ahead and attach them there. So it just gives you more options if you want to do other crazy combinations. I mean, it is a Diaclone figure after all. I think this came unpegged. Is that... There we go. Now it's pegged back on. So you still have a lot of the same articulation. I mean, you have the hip movement. You still have the knee bend because they did put a joint in there, which I appreciate. So you have that still 90 degrees. You have the ankle tilt that I talked about. Pretty much the same shoulder articulation, same elbow, same wrist movement. Uh, head doesn't really move anymore because he's got the helmet on, but the helmet looks fantastic. I mean, that looks really, really cool. I really like the look of this a lot. The chest plate looks great, and again, everything's painted. There's no stickers. It all looks really, really fantastic. I'm really happy with this. Honestly, I, I know. I didn't know what to expect. I saw the pictures and I thought it looked cool. But actually having this in hand. Now this I feel like doesn't have the same. Oh, okay, so this one can actually hold it down there. Okay, that's what it is. Because there's a larger section that doesn't fit in the hand of Gridman. But it will fit in the hand of this larger combination. But as I was saying, I didn't know what to expect with this guy. And I kind of love it. This is a really great Gridman toy. I wish, I wish we had a God Xenon form. And I wish we had the three smaller vehicles. But I get it. I mean, there's just certain things that, you know, you'd have to sacrifice. And this robot combination is perfect. I absolutely love it. But it would have been neat if they could have found a way to do... Even if you couldn't fit God Xenon, because I understand he looks radically different. So, you know, he's more of a white and red color scheme, where this form is pretty much all black. So I get that. But if they could have found a way to make, like, the tank mode and the driller... Obviously, we have, uh, you know, the jet fighter guy over here. So you can kind of see the components... You can definitely see, you know, this kind of is the tank. You obviously see the drills for the shoulders, just like the original. And uh, this is kind of the red fighter for the backpack. So you can kind of see 
the different aspects of the three vehicles that make up God Xenon, but they're just not uh, actually able to be made with these. But you can kind of see the influences from it. But yeah, this is really, really cool. And then we still have the Bullet Fighter over here as a separate piece. So I think this is a lot of fun. So I love this thing. Honestly, I like it even more than I thought I would. I always knew I would like it, but I, I really love this thing. It's really, really well done. Diaclone toys usually are. Now, it is pricey, so I will say if you have the means to grab this one, I don't think you'll be disappointed, but it is pricey, so keep that in mind. Diaclone toys always are. But this is kind of the crossover I didn't know I always wanted, if that makes sense. Uh, I never would have thought to cross over Diaclone and Gridman, but they did a great job. The Gridman figure is fantastic. Uh, this combination battles Gridman, if you want to call it Thunder Gridman. I say go ahead, it basically is. Uh, it's great, really great. The articulation's good. The paint applications are fantastic. All the pieces feel uh, pretty solid and, and they hold together well. I mean, this guy is not floppy by any means. He really holds together and everything snaps together even better than I anticipated. Uh, I love the little bullet fighter, plus you get the little diaclone pilot in there which looks really, really cool. I love the sword. It has the sword and shield. It combines for the super sword, just like Gridman did back on the show. Uh, did not anticipate that, but that's fantastic. The only thing I would complain about is, you know, I had a little bit of trouble with the shoulders when connecting them to the wings because it didn't really stay in place, but that's a minor nitpick. I mean, honestly, you can kind of slide it up the track a little bit to keep it in place, and that's not a problem. And they combine to the shoulders in this mode really well. So it's a very minor nitpick. Honestly, I don't really have too much to complain about this guy. He's pretty great. Now, wish list stuff, sure, it would have been awesome if there was a God Xenon mode. Didn't expect it. Sure, it would be awesome if you could form the three smaller vehicles that Gridman had on the show. Again, didn't expect it. That's just wish list stuff. I mean, there's only so much engineering they can put into these. And I think if it had all those uh, abilities, it would have been even more expensive. And plus, they would have had to change something because these pieces just don't naturally go together that way. So I don't know even know how they would have done it. Honestly, I'm no toy engineer, but obviously it would have made the set even more expensive. But I think what we get here is is perfectly great. Honestly, love the Gridman figure, love the combination, love the three various forms you can do where you, if you just have the bullet fighter on its own, if you have it combined with just the backpack, if you have it in the entire uh, battle hanger mode. All are great. I really like them. You can attach Gridman to the top. He pegs on very easily. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's really not too much to complain about this one, except the price. Like I said, it is pricey, but it's a good quality toy. So if you have the means and you're thinking about it, I say go ahead. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm really kind of blown away. Like I said, I always expected to like it, but I was actually really kind of blown away by this one. So there are going to be more Gridman crossovers. I think actually some of them just came out. And I might have them in my private warehouse on HLJ, so I'll see about shipping those over. But uh, yeah, this one's a lot of fun. I really, really like it a lot. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.